Hey there, this is Bakari Shivanu with Mac Automation Tips. Hey, I'm coming back with one more video in my series about SuperTab. There's a couple of features in there that I really want to point out and go into a little bit more detail. So stick around and check it out. Okay, so here we are back into um, SuperTab. And if you kind of, um, you know, if you watched my previous videos on SuperTab, and this is my series, is about uh, four of them or five of them. And you can go into, well, this is the fifth one actually. So it's, it's four of them. So this is the fifth one. And, and I go in and talk about, you know, how to set up SuperTab and set up the preferences. And I go over all the kind of main features of super tab and go reading the detail and um in, in part four but in part four i kind of talked about um a feature you know called the screenshot feature and this is let me pull this up here um you, a screen a screenshot feature that didn't work when i was trying to demonstrate it and the reason why was because i had not downloaded the update uh to the software so one of my viewers here on youtube uh you know kc definitely thank you kc for pointing out that to me and letting me know so i updated my super tab and now it works so let me show you what i mean uh, by the screenshot um you know feature here in super tab so basically i can i can click on this one here and let me try that again. There you go. So basically I click on this one here and basically what it does is gives me all the options for taking a screenshot. So I can do a screenshot based on a selection where, you know, it triggers the screenshot and then I, you know, draw the, the, um, the cursor around what I want to capture. Um, or I can do a selection after the delay, so it can be a kind of a timed screenshot there. Um, it's, I can do a selected window, so I can put the cursor on a window and it will capture that entire window without me having to draw or, you know, to, you know, to kind of create a, a box with the uh, cursor there. Same thing with selected window after delay. Um, the front window automatically will, will uh, capture the front window on the desktop. And this one here will, uh, will capture the entire desktop. And this one here is screen, uh, screen capture um, after a delay. So it gives you those options there. You can do it this way. This is, this is the preferred way because you don't have to remember any shortcuts in order to, to do this. You don't have to open up the image um, capture uh, application that Apple puts out. You can, all, you can do it right from SuperTab really quickly. Now... The, the you can also create different types of screenshots that uh, that you can you know just automatically do so if I click this one right here right it will automatically take a picture of my um, my desktop and you know I don't so and it I think it does that and, and uh, here it goes so you know it's taking it there and you see um, let me see it takes a little second here. So it saves it to the desktop here and you see it open up just like that. Okay. So that's how that's done. So let me show you now how that's how all these are put together. So basically I'm just going to go in here and configure it. Well, let me start from scratch. So basically you're going to go from here. And you're going to click on the uh, button here, the plus button and no, not the plus button. I'm sorry. You're going to go over into here. That's, that's for creating a row. For creating an item, you're going to add an item here and go add an item. And then you're going to click on screenshot configuration right here. And then basically you have a lot of options here that you can do. Uh, so basically you can choose if you want, if you wanted to ask you what, like I just showed you, if you wanted to ask you which type of shot you want to make, then you'll choose that one. Or you say, I want to have just a regular screenshot, like, you know, if you're doing the, I think, Command Shift 4, right? So you just want a regular screenshot and you want it, you can select what type of format you want it in, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, what have you. And you can um, also have it where if you want it to automatically hide any kind of desktop icons there, if you want to copy to the, to the clipboard, I usually don't do that. You might, I might, you might want to save it to directly to your desktop. Um, if you want to have it automatically placed into an, uh, uh, a new email, 
if you wanted to open up in preview or some other um, image organization or some other organization, I'm sorry, some other application that accepts images, right? Or do you want to have it saved to a particular folder and you can go in and find the folder that you want. So you have uh, several options for what you want to do there and you can make up like I've done here, you can make up all different types of ones that you want to have in there. And, and just basically, you just kind of base it on your own particular workflow and, and what you normally do. So, so you see here, I just clicked that one. All I got to do is draw it and it will save it to, I think, the desktop or wherever I configured that one to save. Uh, let me see. Let's go back here. I don't think I even, did I configure that to anything? Let me see. Okay, so I just had that, that one's just the default, so I had that configured to the, the, the clipboard, which, you know, it doesn't do me too much good for that, so I'm going to change it here to save it to the desktop here, all right? And so the only thing missing on it is it doesn't have kind of an annotation tool. It doesn't open up in its own application, so if you wanted to do some annotating on the screenshot, you can definitely have it open up in preview. So you just set your preferences for how you want that, um, to happen. Okay. So that was, I just really wanted to kind of go into detail because I think that's a, just a really good feature to have, particularly if you are the kind of person who takes a lot of screenshots, um, you know, like I do, I take several of them. I have also, you know, another application called ScreenFlow, which is, uh, which is right here, which I, I use that mostly. I use that the most for, you know, taking screenshots because basically what that does, it gives me this kind of, um, let me see, I just opened the browser up here. Let me try it again. So screen float. Um, oh, I see what it is. So basically, this is how this is how it works. So um, let me do it real quickly. So there you go. So I bring it up here. And I can, I can take a screenshot and you notice that when I, after I do the screenshot, it stays open on my desktop. So that's the reason why I use screen float the most. But for me, you know, like having this, um, this, this options here, particularly for entire screenshots, you know, like I want to take whole screenshots or time team uh, screenshots. Those work really great because I don't have to remember the, the shortcut and I can just go right ahead and click it and, and it do the work for me. Okay. So now, so here, another thing that I wanted to show you about, um, super tab is what I do now is I use a to instead of just using the the um, the hot corner to trigger screen uh, um, uh, to trigger super tab? What I do is I do a uh, I do a four finger swipe up on my trackpad, and that triggers the shortcut for um for you know for the uh, for super tab. So I don't have to, you know, I don't have to take my cursor because I have a 20, 27 inch iMac. And so I don't always want to drag my cursor all the way to that, to that hot corner. And I can just basically do a swipe up like that, a four finger swipe up. And then it just opens it up uh, wherever the, um, the cursor is. So if you, you happen to use uh, better touch tool and you should be using it to, uh, in my opinion um, That's another way that you can trigger super tab in that way and you can also assign in in super tab preferences I talk about the preferences in I think uh, Section in, in, in the part one or part two of, of this series you can go in and you can set up um, the um, the shortcut uh, for that and then I just map the shortcut inside of a, a better touch tool um, trigger. So that's, that's another thing to do. So definitely, you know, check out the, uh, the, if you don't know anything about super tab, um, do the parts one through four and now part five. And then also if you're, if you haven't downloaded or paid for super tab, you will get, you can get 60% off just by using, going to this particular page here. I, I'll put the link in, um, in the show notes below. Um, in the comment section below or what have you and um, you can you can definitely get it for just eight bucks I mean, it's really a modest fee there and you see it gets a little quote from me because I wrote about super tab way back when I was uh, Writing for make so anyway 
um, if you if you use this particular uh, affiliate link, and I, I do get a few, uh, a few I think a dollar or something like that. If you if you use um, if you use my link, so I really appreciate if you use my affiliate link because you will get sixty percent off, and all you got to do is pay pay eight dollars, and it's really worth it because there's a lot of features in it. So hey, if you have any questions about SuperTab, hey, let me know. Give me some comments in the, uh, in the section below, and if you haven't subscribed to my uh, to my YouTube channel, please do so. I will see you again next time. Take care.